What difference does it make that you read the Gita or the Quran? It's not their sense of every book. The love I have for you. Did I get the meaning right? Ah, something like that. Okay. Um, or oh, the love we have for each other. Right. All right, today, of course, is the last assembly this semester. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of you most sincerely for staying on with this wonderful journey from July till today. And today in particular, in spite of the inclement weather, you have cared to come, which is appreciated. Now, we did a head count of those who have 100% attendance so far. Are they all here? Can I see their hands? Yeah, you're all here. So, um, I would like to invite all of you, all those who have 100% attendance, with, that includes also the faculty members, to a cup of tea in my garden tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Will you come? How many of you will come? Uh, on behalf of those who have 100% attendance, I would like to invite the others also to tea tomorrow. How many of you will come? <laughs> I need to know because I don't want to waste even a drop of tea. Can you, can you raise your hands more confidently? So about, uh, about 50, 60? All right. Uh, if, you, if you say you are coming, you must turn up. It's not a good thing to waste anything in this country, or anywhere for, uh, for that matter in the world. So we meet tomorrow at 4 o'clock in my garden for a cup of tea. When I say tea, it's not just tea. It also includes tea cups. <laughs> um, well, actually, why should I decide? I'm going to request the Dean of Residence to organize this tea according to his imagination. Usually, deans of residence have been either very imaginative or very mischievous. Either way, young people are the gainers. And the principal is always the loser. So I leave it to Father Monadip Daniel to organize this tea at 4 o'clock tomorrow in the principal's garden. Now, uh, to... Um, Take up the second word, as I promised yesterday, from the text. What is the second word? Transformed. Be transformed. That's more than one word. So, transform, be transformed. Yesterday we were looking at being conformed. Right. Now, uh, Yeshwarthan has given us more insights into that process is taken a historical perspective. Um, so that sort of complements what I've been trying to say. So by now you have a clear idea of the self-defeat embedded in this attitude to life which is defined and or driven entirely by sheer conformity. By the way, even rebelliousness is sheer conformity. If you rebel only because you are living in a context of rebelliousness, in an age of rebelliousness, you are only conforming to the pattern of the age, the pattern of the world. If roaming around is the reigning pattern of the world and you rebel in favor of roaming around footloose and fancy free, then you are not a free thinker. You are mindlessly conforming 
to the existing pattern. If eating out is the pattern of the world, then refusing to eat at home is not free thinking. Is not freedom of any kind. It is sheer mindless conformity. If fooling around, boycotting classes is the fashion of the day, and you simply do that, you are simply conforming. So you have to make a very clear distinction between what it means to not to conform. Not every gesture or posture of defiance, of rebelliousness, indicates true non-conformity. Our non-conformity has to be justified in terms of adding something of value to the world, to the human experience, to the culture that we belong to, or to the experience of, of the human species. Mere gestures, dramatic posturing, these things don't belong to this category at all. And I need to make that distinction very clear to you. Okay? Now, to take up this very important concept of being transformed. Now, the reality is, or the need for transformation for, must first be understood. That need arises out of the fact that what we are today is nowhere near our true scope or potentiality. What we are expressing today is not our true nature, not our real scope. We are, as it were, a caricature of ourselves. Today, we are not doing any justice to the scope of our being. We are a wonderful entity, a wonderful phenomenon. We are a miracle. We are the wonder of wonders. And yet, we lead such a pedestrian life. Some people say they feel bored. Some are depressed. Some simply drift through life. Therefore, it has now become a universal epidemic that human beings are no longer able to express themselves truly and fully in their day-to-day -day life. One proof of this is that all of us, in varying ways, daydream. What are we daydreaming about? We are daydreaming of that wonderful possibility, that great scope which we know to be sleeping somewhere within ourselves. We know ourselves that we are not what we today appear to be. Therefore, we simply sit and dream. But while it is, while it is good to dream, it's not sufficient to dream. We must do something about our dreams. Now, in literature, as well as in mythology, there is an archetypal pattern. Uh, archetypal pattern or patterns are patterns that repeat themselves. And a pattern that repeats itself is a pattern of eternal relevance. This pattern will remain relevant as long as we remain human. So archetypal patterns are at the root of being human. 
In literature and in mythology, there is this archetypal pattern of what's called the heroic journey. The heroic journey. Now what it means is simple but very profound and very appropriate to our theme today. It means uh, so something like this. A person could be leading a very ordinary life, stuck in the common circumstances, completely summed up in routine activities, maybe totally even unaware of a great horizon of possibilities. Life will go on like that in a pedestrian fashion. But someday, something unexpected will happen. Maybe somebody will come into his life. Let, let me give you an illustration from the Bible. There were two brothers by name Simon and Andrew. They were fishermen. They used to catch fish in the Sea of Galilee. And one day after their work, they sat in their boat, mending their net. And at that time, there came along a young man called Jesus of Nazareth. And he said to them, follow me. That day, their life, their destiny changed. Till that moment, their life was completely routinized. Every day was like any other day. The scope of possibilities in their life was extremely limited. They really had nothing to look forward to with hope, nothing to look backward to with pride. But that day, their life shifted from routine to revolution. And they began to enter into a world of incredible experiences and immortal possibilities. A small little event, to the extent that they responded to it, inaugurated the pattern of the heroic journey. This can happen in the life of every human being. Something will happen at the right time to make you aware of the fact that the way you are living today, your idea of yourself, your way of life, the goal for which you are living, the activities that comprise your life, all these things do no justice to who you really are. But mind you, every human being is also given the freedom of choice to turn the other way or turn a deaf ear to that particular call, the call of destiny. This can happen to you while you are in St. Stephen's College. This can happen to you much later in life. Maybe such an experience happened to you in your life before you came to St. Stephen's and you did not pay heed to it. Who knows? But surely in the life of a human being, a magic, a mystical moment will come. When destiny will come calling. It doesn't matter who you are. Surely that moment will come. And at that time, the most crucial thing is whether or not you're open to that possibility. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean to be transformed? The prefix trans, T R A N S, means beyond. The root of the word transform is form. You add the prefix trans, 
trans-border uh, activity, beyond the border activity. Okay. Now, the, the concept of transformation implies the insight that I've already mentioned to you that nothing as it exists at the present time exists in its fullness and that every person, every object has a scope which is way beyond what is in evidence, what is manifested today and our really sacred duty is to move from where we are today to that glorious destination. And a simple familiar word for those which I have often used in my assembly addresses is growth. Now physical growth of course is growth in quantity. But mental and particularly spiritual growth is not in terms of quantity. Um, suppose you read, um, suppose your brain weighs say 100 grams today. And in the next one year you read 500 books. Of course you will not read, I know. But suppose you read 500 books. Now, will your brain weigh uh, 110 grams? Because all the 500 books are now lo located in your brain. A lot of knowledge is uh, uh, fermenting in your brain. No. It is not quantitative, it's qualitative. The difference between body and on the one hand, and the mind and the soul on the other is, the one is quantitative and the other is qualitative, for want of a better word, really. Even the word qualitative is not adequate. So, it's something like this. Let me use, let me use an illustration from chemistry. Titration, students of chemistry. Okay, is it called quantitative analysis? All right. You titrate one liquid against the other. What do you use? Pipette? Right? Use pipette? All right. Hmm? Or oh, burette, burette, burette. All right. I mean, what difference does it make to a man of literature that it is pipette, not burette, and burette, not pipette? Hmm? All right. So what you do is you titrate one against the other drop by drop by drop. All right. For a long while, nothing happens. Then you reach a certain point. One more drop, and the whole quantity changes its color. Now, there you may say, well, it's purely quantitative. Yeah, it's quantitative, but it's something more than quantity. There is, some, there is a mystery about it. So that particular moment when that one more drop is added to your life will come. And that is important. Your destiny depends on this. It doesn't depend on what kind of income you have, how much power you wield, in which college you study. All this is irrelevant. The question is, have you reached that magical point when that one drop will make all the difference. So transformation is something that all of us need to dream of. Let me give you an illustration uh, from literature and I'll stop. It's a wonderful novel, a difficult novel by Joseph Conrad, published in 1900. It's called, it's titled Lord Jim. Lord Jim is a young member of the very distinguished tradition of British Merchant Navy. And he joins a ship called uh, the Patna. And he does so because he wants what he calls an adventurous sense of duty. Mere work is not enough. 
You must combine duty or work with adventure. Now, so the, the, the greatest tradition in the world, distinguished for its adventurous sense of duty, is the British Merchant Service. So he joins the service. He is now sailing on the Patna. And while he sails, he stands on the deck and he dreams of acts of heroism. And he thinks that he is that hero. He's already that hero simply because he joined the British Merchant Service. Just as some people think that by simply joining St. Stephen's College, they become great people. It's ridiculously untrue. So what happens is one day the, hit, uh, the ship hits something and Jim thinks that the ship is about to sink and he jumps. And in the British Merchant Service, you're not supposed to abandon your station. You're supposed to go down with the ship. Or at least save everybody else before you save your own skin. So, but unfortunately for him and fortunately for others, the ship does not sink. And then there is a court, mar there is a court of inquiry set up and it indicts Jim. Then, of course, he runs away. It's a long story. Finally, he reaches a place deep inside the Malay, Malay jungle called Patterson. There he encounters the challenge of his life. And he gives his life to affirm his ideals and dies a heroic death. Now, the gym of Patterson is very different from the gym of the Patna. There is something called transformation. And in my scheme of things, education must bring about the transformation of the being of every student. And that's what makes education truly meaningful. Let's rise for prayer.